It's time for episode three of our Aberdeen save, and it doesn't get much more challenging than having to face Celtic in our first ever league match as Aberdeen manager. We've made some transfers, a bit of other news to catch you up on as well, so let's get right into the episode and hopefully, hopefully come out with a win. Hi everyone, Jake here. Welcome back to the Aberdeen series. We've had episode one and two released now and you guys have absolutely smashed the support on that. So I want to say a massive thank you to you all. And as mentioned today, we have not only got uh, some transfers, there's not much transfers going on to be honest, but some transfer news alongside a match against Celtic away from home and then a home match against St Mirren, which is probably the more winnable one of the two. I say probably, it definitely is. And there's some other things to catch you up on too, but before we get into all of that, if you guys could keep up the excellent, excellent support, I would massively appreciate it. So smash the like button, drop a comment down below, either about the series or just to help the algorithm. I will be very happy if you did and subscribe to the channel as we've just surpassed 13,000 subscribers, which is awesome. So let's keep that going and see just how far we can go with it. But yes, getting back to the Aberdeen save, we of course have that big match today, the start of our league season, which will be against Celtic. Now, the first thing I want to point out is you may see that our League Cup results were slightly different to what you saw on camera. And that was because after I did those two matches, I forgot to hit the save button, which is, you know, a good time to learn it, if anything, right? To not hit the save button in our first matches instead of the actual important ones. But the results are still the same. We still won both when I had to replay them. I actually think by less of a margin than before. So if anything, I've shot myself in the foot. But then after that, we won our next League Cup game 3-1 and then lost the next one 1-0, which was a little bit disappointing. But, you know, we're still learning the team. We're learning what's going on. So we're not going to get too annoyed about that. We did qualify from the League Cup, but in second place, not in first, that actually went to Arborath FC, a team in the second division, I think. Now, I don't know how the Cup works, but I would assume it means we get a less favourable draw. So that's slightly annoying. We then had a friendly against Stuttgart, which we lost, but I did not manage that. And now we have our game against Celtic. And like I said, a few days later we'll be playing St Mirren. Now our transfer business is nowhere near done and there will definitely be more to come probably in the next episode but we've still managed to do something this window. There's a few players coming in but I managed to bring in what I think is a very good free signing for this level and it's actually a new left back. He's a 29 year old Brazilian by the name of Mansour and he's currently considered to be one of the best players at the club. He's very consistent and he's supposedly a good player for the division. Very well rounded in all of his attributes and comes in as our best left back ahead of Phil Barsley, Liam Scales, Hayden Coulson amongst many others but uh, other than that it's been a lot harder than I thought to sign players now there's a lot that we're in talks to do but at one point we almost had Ricardo Caresma on a free uh, yeah that Ricardo Caresma he decided he was going to go to Dundee I think it was which I thought was an odd decision, but we lost out on him. We then had a centre-back that I found for £50,000 from the Bulgarian divisions that looked great. The scouts came across him, said he was great, he did look good, but he's gone and joined someone else, so we didn't get him. And a few transfers have fell apart, but there's a lot still going on, and we actually have more in the budget than before. As you can see, we've got close to a million now in the transfer budget and £5,000 in the wages. That's not because we sold anyone, but actually there was a transfer clause that we could sell that granted us about £800,000. So I just took it. I figured £800,000 to us now could be massive. I haven't yet been able to spend it on what I want to spend it on, but if we put some of it in the wage budget, there's enough room there for still a couple of incomings. But first, I feel like we need to trim down the squad and also obviously not block the pathways of any of these very good young under 18 players that a lot of you have recommended I use and I definitely will. I'm just going to wait for the right time to drop them in to the starting lineups, particularly these two at the top look very special. Our best 11 would supposedly look something like this. Roos in goal, Bardsley, Stewart, Scales and Mansour at the back with Ramadani, Clarkson and McCory. Vicente Basujan, who I've been told is actually just called Vinny by Aberdeen fans. So I'm going to call him that because it makes it a lot easier for me. Hayes and Miofsky, who has ended up getting injured, even though he got injured in the games that we played. And then I lost that save file. We played him again. And yes, he got injured once more, which was very annoying. Uh, so we'll have to find a replacement for him in this match and it is now time to actually pick the team 
to play Celtic. Outside of that, there's not too much to update you on. Um, I guess I could quickly show you the staff situation, which is slowly getting better. I've appointed people to go out and find the right staff for us, and it looks like it's getting better. But our coaches, we definitely need a few more there. I think this is the team that we're going to go for. It's Roos in goal, Bardsley Stewart, Milne, who has to play today because Scales isn't allowed because he is a Celtic player on loan. Mansour making his debut at left back, Ramadani, Clarkson, McCory, Roberts, Besujan, or Vinny, and Christian Ramirez. We'll see what those guys can do as a team. I've got to say, considering this is coming so early on in the season, we might have to accept that we're going to get battered here. Obviously, I know Celtic and Rangers are much better than anyone else in the division. I just don't know what kind of margin that is, whether we're expected to get absolutely smashed here or not. I would presume, looking at their squad, the answer would be yes, because I would love to have some of those players. Um, but we've got nothing to lose. We're definitely the underdogs. So let's see if we can cause an upset today. Obviously, playing at Celtic Stadium isn't ideal either, but I'm kind of using this as a throwaway match to learn a lot about the players in these big ties. And then when the time comes against St. Mirren, that's where we'll really see just how far along we are. Obviously, I'll be very happy if we do win today. I'm just not expecting to get anything out of this. But Vinny had a lot of space to run into there. I feel like he could have just closed down in on goal and tapped that in. No one was marking him. Joe Hart was left alone in the net. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't take that opportunity that was presented to us. And now, 18 minutes in, we get the second highlight. And this time, it looks to be Celtic's first attack of the season against us. It's a barder to Moy. He tries playing Turnbull. We managed to get it away. And it ends up back with Roos in goal. And that was fine. Good defending. We're working well. Let's see what we can do. Jack Milne, who's playing today, wouldn't usually. But he is a good young centre-back by the looks of it. And we'll see whether he can cement his place in the team going forward. I feel like he's young. If I remember right, he's like 19 or so. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Who knows? But here is Juranovic on that right-back spot. Mansour gets him well, loses it. And it's a great strike that just comes off the bar. We get a bit lucky there. It's a lucky escape. We do manage to survive 20 minutes in, or at least it looks like we will. I mean, I thought the highlight was going to end. It didn't. It ended up coming back to Abada, back to Jota, and I think Celtic are going to have a second attempt here. We might be a little bit shaken after that shot that hit the crossbar. It is Jota. It's a long shot. It's into the top right corner. Potential offside here. I assume that is VAR in this division. We'll see. Um, he's going to VAR goal review. Please disallow it. Uh, it's been awarded. Fair enough. It was a nice finish. Uh, from Jota over there obviously one of the best players in the whole division and um, so I'm not too upset that he's managed to find the back of the net and I would expect as the years go on he might not stay at Celtic in this save but it's been a I guess an okay start from us not ideal the possession isn't really in our favor but I'm not expecting anything massive if we can get a goal at some point that would definitely make it interesting and Phil Barsley's trying to make that happen here with a ball into Cal Roberts now Supposedly that was a foul. I don't think it was. It also didn't look to be in the box, but they are checking for a potential penalty. And I'll be very happy if we can get something here. I'm going to fully assume we're not. Penalty review taking place and it is no penalty as expected. Um, I think they're saying that it's outside the box, which is fair enough. Um, but I do just want to check on Jack Milne if we can take a second. He is 19. Yes, he's 19 years old. He's currently had a few loan offers come in. So I'm guessing he's presumed not to be good enough to play for us yet. And I would agree. He is my fourth choice centre-back really this season. And I am still looking for potential recruitments in centre-back to maybe let him go out on loan. But we'll see what happens. For today, he's having to play. So he's going to have to try and do his best for me here. But Jota is through on goal again. Roost has managed to catch the ball. And uh, maybe, maybe we make out of this one alive, but I'm going to guess, yeah, the highlight's going to carry on. The highlight has continued, though. It is us on the ball with Alex Stewart bombing it forward to Christian Ramirez, who I am still trying to actively get rid of. We don't ha really have much choice up front today. Um, and I was kind of hoping his one strength would be winning the balls in the air. He loses it there, though. Celtic go forward. It falls through to Kyogo. Pretty nice finish. He gets played through and he slots it around the goalkeeper. I don't actually know that guy's name. Furuhashi? Furuhashi? That sounds about right. But yes, um, Celtic dominating his ear, really. 31% possession. And I think it might be a few years of this before we really get to the level that I'd want us to get to. But look, it could be a lot worse than 2-0. Um, we'll see what happens at halftime, try and put something into the lads to make them play a bit better and see if we can perform. I've told him it was absolutely terrible, even though it's what I expect. It's got some kind of rise out of the players. One goal would be nice, but again, all eyes really for me will be on that St. Mirren game. They're the games that we need to be winning this year. Uh, these matches against Celtic and Rangers, we're going to lose them for a long time, I would assume. But yeah, it's not been a great performance by any stretch of the imagination, even with that being said. 
Uh, Celtic playing it round is for fun here. Jota finds his way through. I mean, it was a brilliant ball from Aaron Moy to get it to him, but he does blast it wide. And 52 minutes in, it is still 2-0. And I think about 60 in, we will make some changes to hopefully just have a chance in this game. We had that one chance early on from Vinny, uh, but he kind of wasted it. And just as I was about to make some changes, we do have a highlight and it's Celtic on the ball. It may be 3-0, it might be 2-1. Who knows? Maybe nothing's happening, but the ball is back out with Jossa, who seems to be Celtic's danger man here. He's going down that left-hand side. He cuts in, pulls it back to McGregor, but Clarkson does very well. Uh, he's done well in the midfield there to win it back and he bombs it forward. It's absolutely no one, but Starfelt loses it. Christian Ramirez is in. For a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, it's a terrible finish, terrible finish. Joe Hart's positioning was rubbish. There was loads of opportunity there for him to score, but he misses, and that might be the only chance we really get. Although, no, okay, I thought he might be in again there, but the ball does go back to Joe Hart. Christian Ramirez, like I say, doesn't really have a long-term role at this club, in my opinion. He's the one I'm trying to get rid of. Maybe I should have started Duke today instead. You guys have told me it's pronounced Duke, not Duke. Um, and he's supposedly been really good in real life, I've heard, so hopefully... And we'll get something out of him. But he isn't starting today. I might bring him off the bench in a second to get a feel for him. And it is 3-0 now. Turnbull scores from a ball in from Jota. And yeah, let's just make some changes. Hasn't gone well at all. But it's a learning curve, of course. Cal Roberts also not playing well. Let's get Shaden Morris on. Phil Bardsley can come off. No one's having a good game at all out here today. Nor is Mansour. Get Paul Vara on as well. And then, yeah, I think that'll basically do. We'll just get some subs on, freshen up. And if anyone can impress in these next 30 minutes, I'll likely give them a start in that coming match against St. Mirren in a week or so's time. But that was too easy from Celtic. Played it round. Jota, as good as he is, He's having too much fun out there against Phil Barsley. Plays it in to Turnbull, who pulls it in to the back of the net. And 60 minutes in, we're 3-0 down. Celtic are having an ideal start to the season. Us not so much. They might be looking to pile on the misery here, though, because Abada has the ball on that right-wing position. A wonder kid, one of the best this year, actually, on that right-hand side. One of the best you can get. He always turns in to a great player. And he is in again here today. And Roos makes a good save to prevent the goal. Um, and I kind of just want to see this out at 3-0. I feel like it's only going to get worse for us. I'll demand more. Hopefully the fans don't hate me too much for this first game. It's a pretty much as hard of a test as you could get. So anyone in the comments, do bear that in mind. We are playing the hardest match we could have played as our first match. So it's all uphill from here, really. Um, but here is Richardson, who finds Morris running forward. Number seven for us. Pulls it back to Richardson. He plays a good ball in. Duke's kind of there, kind of not. Ends up falling to Polvara. Leighton Clarkson with the shot, and it's just wide. But he... I mean, I, don't, I can't see how well he's playing. He's on a seven, so he is definitely the bright spark in our team. I was going to say from the eye test, it looks like he's been the good player. Um, but it's hard to tell too much from what's going on with these key highlights. But basically, Celtic are dominating. And I think we're just going to see a fourth goal here with Jota finding his way through far too easily. Roos manages to keep the scoreline reasonable at 3-0, but the corner will follow. 87 minutes on the clock, and we're kind of just praying for the full-time whistle with nothing else happening. That is the case. We have lost. It's been a poor performance. Uh, Leighton Clarkson, the only one that can really hold his head up high. I did just do the team talk. The assistant suggested that I say, unlucky, it wasn't our day, good effort, which I kind of said. And the boys, you know, it all came up with red. So clearly they thought they could have done better in that game. Um, so we have lost the first one. Celtic go top. We fall low into the table, but it's nothing to worry about right now. Let's just get on to the St. Mirren game and hopefully have a better performance. Okay, it's game day against St. Mirren. We've had about a week pass since that match against Celtic. We've hired a few extra staff members. A new assistant manager is in, which will hopefully help. And we've also had a few transfer offers for a young winger by the name of Ryan Duncan on loan. And I actually think he'd fit quite nicely into our setup. So I'm going to give him a chance today. Miofsky is back for this match. And there's also been a bit of a development on the transfer front. There's a few trialists that have came into the club that I'm hoping if we can secure could be massive deals for the team. Um, I won't reveal who they are just yet. They're, if I scroll down, you'd see them basically. Um, but they are some very, very nice players. And if either one of them would join us, I think we'd be looking good. There's also a sign-in that's in the work permit stage that we're bringing in soon. So I think next episode is going to be the one where you get the full transfers. But I had to show this first match against Celtic. Liam Scales comes into the team now that he's eligible to play. And Jaden Richardson will take Phil Barsley's place at right back. Barsley didn't look good in the last match and Jaden Richardson even if he doesn't play well is developing slowly and will hopefully become 
anywhere close to that five star potential that he has, I'd be very happy with that. But let's get into this game and see if we can cause some issue to St. Mirren. This will be a much better game to judge where we're at compared to the one against Celtic, of course. We're not expected to compete with teams like Celtic, but teams like St. Mirren, we definitely are. So hopefully in this game, we can play well. They're also playing a very similar formation to us. Obviously, their roles could be completely different, but they're also setting up with a 4-3-3 with a man at the base of the midfield. So we'll see how we can get on here. I'm hoping as well being at home will give us that slight advantage. And so far, XG is kind of even, but we're having a lot of the ball. So hopefully, if we can just use it a bit better, we might actually create a chance. And here's the first highlight. 30 minutes in, a lot of the game already passed. And Richardson is using that electric pace on that right-hand side to get in. He finds Miofsky in the box, but four men rise to beat him to the air. It comes into Ramadani on that right-hand side, into Richardson again. He finds Vinny Basujan, and he should be scoring that. A lot of empty seats in the Aberdeen Stadium today. I hope that won't be the case long-term, but um, yeah, I feel like that should have been a goal from Vinny there. Obviously, we're not playing with the highest quality players in the world, but that's still a very good goal-scoring opportunity. And only a minute later, we're going to go again with Richardson firing the ball back into the box. St. Mirren, Clear it away long. Mansour's chasing after it. He's got a man right on his back. Can he show his composure here? He can. He finds Roos at the back and we're going to build again. He finds Stewart, one of our best players, of course, at centre-back. Clarkson pressing high. St. Mary managed to get it away. We managed to get it back and eventually it came back to Richardson, who finds Clarkson, who's in. He sweats it to Miofsky and Miofsky is able to tap it in for our first league goal of the season. His third of the season so far, including those League Cup matches. It's a very well-worked goal. It's exactly what we're after. A great run through as well from Leighton Clarkson. And then he does really nice to pull it back here. I actually thought it might be offside for a second, but Miofsky holds his run well. And we take a 1-0 lead in the first winnable match, really, of the season. We go 1-0 up against St. Mirren. And if we can pile on the uh, goals here in the misery, that'll be a great start for us and really boost morale. But of course, the game is nowhere near over yet. St. Mirren could easily score the way that we did. So we'll see what happens. 30 minutes in, Carson has the ball in net for St. Mirren. He clears it. Not too far, though. Ryan Duncan picks it up. He plays it through to Miofsky, who's in again. He's on fire, but he doesn't score this time. Carson makes the save. We go close, and now we're going to try and go again from the corner. I haven't actually set up a corner set piece routine yet, so I need to figure that out. I need to get an idea of who the big people are in the squad, who is actually good in the air, and then work from there. Um, but yeah, that will be something that will hopefully get us a lot of goals. Obviously, this is the highest tier of Scottish football, but the quality is lower than what you have in the Premier League, or you could argue even the Championship, some might say. But what I'm trying to say is in those lower leagues in England, set pieces are so effective, even Championship and even the Premier League, of course. But the physicality side of getting in the air, winning balls and scoring from set pieces is a major part of this level of football when we don't have amazingly technical players. So I really do need to work on some kind of set piece routine to try and get some goals. But so far, we've got to be happy with that first half, dominating possession, dominating XG, not really letting St. Mirren have too much joy in this match. And 60 minutes in, things are looking good. And I think it's time to make some changes, but it's been a great performance here from the young Ryan Duncan. And that is promising going forward, but Basujan maybe not doing as well. So we're going to see if we can move something around here. I think I might still keep him on. And just to protect Miofsky, I'm going to bring him off for Duke. I'm also going to bring on Hayden Coulson for Mansour, who's not having the best game and probably hasn't looked too good since signing, but he needs some time to settle in. And I'm going to bring on Jack Milne for Ramadani at the base of the midfield. I'm definitely butchering some of these names still, but we're getting there. I'm starting to get the pronunciations, starting to get a feel for life in Scottish football. But it's been a dominant performance so far. I really just hope we don't let the one goal or one chance at St. Mirren have go in. And we might be doing that right now. But Basujan should have the opportunity to get this away. I'd love a second goal to secure the win. And Duke's trying to use his physical presence up there to win it. Um, and I think we've ended up with a ball. We have. Duke is through. Looks potentially offside. But he's taken it well. And he's finished brilliantly into that bottom corner. A great goal from Duke. Ross McCory playing it over the top. And Duke does very well to finish. 2-0 up. That's exactly what we needed. A second goal. And Duke is showing why he should be our backup striker. Not Christian Ramirez. He finishes. Takes his chance. He's also quite versatile, Duke. I saw he could play on the inverted winger on that right-hand side position. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but as a backup striker, he seems to fit perfectly. And who knows, maybe even he'll compete with Miofsky at top. Poor defending from St. Mirren, but we do go 2-0 up. And hopefully now we'll see this out with a comfortable win. But I'd love a third, and we might be on for that right now. We've got the ball. It's to Clarkson. Oh, it's cleared away. 
just as it looked like it might be a big opportunity for us. It wasn't necessarily blocked off the line, but that definitely was traveling and going in from Clarkson, who again is one of the best performances on the pitch, but player of the match is Jaden Richardson, who was very good on that right-hand side, and maybe Phil Bosley wasn't the man we needed after all. Maybe we've just got to put our trust in the young right back this season. But that's what we want to see. A big win, three points. I don't know when I'll come back next, potentially sometime in October for these away matches against Rangers and then maybe at home to Hibs. I think that's a good little period of time for me to get used to the team, play some matches, give you guys stuff to fill yourself in on and also hopefully make a fair few sign-ins. So that'll be when you see me next. The Celtic game we learned a lot from. We're clearly nowhere near their level yet, but that St. Mirren match is a very good test to see where we're at. And if we also go to the Premiership, let's see where St. Mirren are predicted to come pretty close to us. So the fact that we're winning that 2-0 is a great sign. Let's keep this up throughout the season. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy this one for me, guys. Subscribe for more, drop a comment, but most of all, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.